Hey Manny, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. I hope you're having a great Father's Day trip out to LA. And I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses. By the way, my new GoPro camera, the GoPro Hero 3, dun, 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 lighter, quicker, stronger, faster. Let's see what it does. You are buying a Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer, color 622, which is the black rubber and the 52 eye size that I wear. Today I'm wearing color 6053, but the lenses I'm cutting will fit yours and my frame. So I'm gonna take them out of the original packaging that Ray-Ban sends them to me. This is your Ray-Ban frame, your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, all the above. I'm gonna put that back in there. And this is exactly how it comes to me. This is the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer made in italy so i'm going to pop out your original heavy glass lenses pop those out and i'm going to put your italian frame into my thirty thousand dollar santinelli my santinelli it is the le 1000 patternless edger and the stylus is coming up and tracing the shape of the right lens then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality you buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame, or any frame for that matter, and you f receive free single vision prescription lenses. So I'm gonna pop, pull up the shape of your lens on the computer. I'm gonna put in your pupillary distance of 62. Let's do that, there is 62. This is a polycarbonate lens that I'm gonna cut on the soft cycle because of the anti-glare coating. And this is a Xyle frame, which is just an old school name for plastic when they used to be made out of Xyloware. Of course, your is the black rubber, the matte black rubber, but uh, most of everything now, plastic frames are acetate. So let me go ahead and get your lenses. Minus four, minus 50 at 93 is your right eye, so I'm gonna take it out of its protective sleeve. I'm gonna spin the axis wheel on my Marco 101 lensometer to 93. I'm gonna set the power drum at minus four. I'm gonna put your lens in, find the sphere power where it comes in clearly. Locate the optical center of the lens, clamp it down, check your astigmatism correction, and then I'm going to put three dots on your lenses, which are virtually impossible for you to see on this camera. So I'm going to use my pen to darken those. Don't worry, I can see them. As long as I can see them, we're good. And that is the right lens, so I'm putting an R on there. Let's do the same thing for your left lens. Minus four and a quarter, minus one at 80. I'm going to spin the axis wheel to 80, put the power drum on four and a quarter. Put your lens in, rotate your lens so I find the sphere power clearly and the optical center. And let's put some new dots on your lenses. So that is one, two, and three, and that is the left. Now, this is a block. This is what's gonna hold it in place while it is cutting in the lathe. I need to attach this to the lens. So 3M, the same people who make the post-it notes, make these double-sided adhesive stickers. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the block, pull the tape away to make the other side sticky. And I'm going to press this onto your lens. And what I'm doing is I'm looking inside. I've got a vertical meridian and a horizontal one. There's three dots I put in there. I want to get those on the horizontal meridian and then the vertical one's going to go right through the optical center. So essentially it's going to be lined up just like the crosshairs of a scope. I'm just getting everything dead center. As far as you know, Manny, I could be off by a mile. No, but those three dots show me it has to be oriented just perfectly. Your lens cannot rotate. I joke with you because it's been a pleasure talking to you on the phone while all these orders have been placed. This is the first of the three pair, plus your brothers are gonna get the Club Master. And actually, I need to go get the mirror lenses out to show you. There's that, and I do want to put one more adhesive sticker on the back of the lens because your anti-glare coating, oops, let me pull over this down so you can see, your anti-glare coating makes everything a little bit, your lens a little bit slippery. So I'm gonna put one more sticker on the back of each lens. There we go. I'm gonna put it into the chuck and hit start. Now the first thing that's going to happen is these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the right side of your frame onto the lens to make sure your lens is large enough to cut out. It's going to start on the concave surface first, which is the rear surface closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move over and trace the front surface, which is the convex side of the lens, which sits away from the face. 
all the while measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel so it sits inside the frame. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's that lighter color wheel that's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away your polycarbonate material. And this wheel in the center with that little channel, the valley, that's what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now we'll have to close the door due to the sound, but for now I just want you to see as your prescription lens touches down on the cutting wheel. So your lenses are polycarb. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection automatically. It's also an aspheric lens, meaning it's a much flatter field of curvature. So it's going to fit inside and be a much better cosmetic appearance than a spherical lens, which can give you a fishbowl appearance. Your anti-glare coating is three features in one. It is an anti-glare, exactly. So it eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, or any glare source. The second feature is it's an anti-reflective lens. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your lens. It makes for much better eye contact. Or if someone takes a picture with the flash, you don't see the flash lit up in the lens like you see the reflection on this one in my hand without that anti-glare coating. The third feature that I like, it comes with the strongest scratch protection of any lens out there. Now while that is cutting, let me get my little book that I was showing you and taking pictures of. The lenses on your left, hopefully you can read the numbers of. You can see my reflection. Hey Matthew, ooh that's cool, looks like there's a spider on every lens. But we've got the silvers, I think you saw the 3R which was one of the blues. The 8R, let me look at my guide over here, let me take this out. And of course you have the pictures here, what is the 3R? That is the solid blue. The 8R is the ultra ray blue, which has 80% brown in it. Of course, we got some oranges ones, a green. What is 12? What is 12? 12 is the black mirror. Now on this side, we have all the other colors. That is the one we were talking about, the virtual red that some has, has a little bit of a black spot in the center. This one on the bottom right is the, where's 24R? The inferno red. Now the dielectric mirrors that you see, those are the ones that move. It's not a st st solid color like it is down here on the bottom. And of course we have a double gradient mirror where it's a mirror at the top and the bottom but not in the center, just another special effect. And then of course, they added one more color which is the solar flare yellow, they call it. A unique yellow gold that will make your sunglasses stand out. So let's pull this yellow out. And that is that one. I think you saw the picture of that. So that's one of the colors that you see there. So that's all of these. And of course, I'll try and get you some more pictures, but I think you were looking at one of the blues and then definitely one of these reds. So I can cut them to go over anything. And again, you have a choice. What you do is you pick a polarized lens color preference that you look through, such as a gray, a brown, or the classic Ray-Ban G15, which is what comes in here. That's a gray-green lens versus a solid gray. And then you can pick any color coating to go on top of that. So you can have a gray lens with a red coating. You can have a brown lens with a blue coating. It's just when you look out of the lens, you'll see whatever color that you have chosen. And when people are looking at you, they will see this color. In fact, if I pull this red out, let's see what the background color is. It looks like a gray. So when you look through here, everything is gray, but when people look at you, they see the red. That's how it works. And I know you wanted two different colors of red. And actually, what did I do? Where did I hide it? Let me get my, my bag out, all my, my stuff. By the way, I happen to have your brother's frame in stock. This is the Ray-Ban 5104, color 2077 in the 49. I just used it to cut someone else's lenses and ship them the lenses only. But this is the brand new frame. I used it one time as a template to cut out of someone else's lenses. Then I popped the demos back in. So, if your brother doesn't mind, I'm going to try his frame on so you see what it looks like on me. I'm going to try that on. The old school vintage look. Let me turn the camera so you can see it. 
but I'm sure it's going to look much better on the 23 year old brother than it does on this old man here. So let me take these off, put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. Turn the camera back down so you can watch everything else. Of course, the little protective sleeve back onto the temple and close that up, drop that. Let's see, put this back inside here. Now, let me get started on your right lens because I know the 52 fits perfect every time. I'm going to take it out of the chuck. Let me move my solar panels. The safety bevel to smooth out any rough edges that you have left over on the edge of your lens from the cutting cycle. I'm going to use my thumbnail to scrape the schwarf off, which is this white powdery substance. And once it's on the counter, I wipe it on the floor and I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this. So if you want to grow up and make a mess like me, you got to stay in school. So if you ever want to change your lenses out, this is what you do. It's always with the thumb. It's always at the nose. You're always going to press down with your thumb at the nose. So to put your lens in, I have the frame with the temples pointing downward and the lenses upright. And I have the side I'm working on closest to me. I'm not trying to reach over the frame. But I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner first and using my thumbs, press down at the nose. And that snaps in perfectly every time like the 52 does. The 55 has a deeper bevel. So I'd always have to cut it down a little bit more. So I'm putting your left lens in and it's going to do the same process. It's going to trace the left side of your frame now onto the lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out just like before starting with the rear surface then moving over and doing the front surface now as soon as this is done and actually while that's doing it you've seen that before let me dig through my bag of everything else i got to ship and cut tonight got to send these lenses off but here is your folding wayfair how cute is that in this little box i'm going to open it up this is the little leather case that comes with it. Even Emboss says folding Wayfair. Pull them out. And it actually comes with one of the blue mirror coated in there. So if you have seen that, and of course it folds up. And when it unfolds, you do not see the seams. This is perfect. This is nice. And that is loud. So there is that. And let's see what color mirror coating this is close to. Is that the ADAR? Can we see that? Is my camera good enough? I'm getting some reflection from the fluorescence. That's pretty close. And of course we got the... I can't remember, was it the 16R? Which one was that? The electric blue or the 14R, which is the arctic blue. Pretty close to the arctic blue, but either way, nonetheless, you can pick whatever color. In theory, you could do a green lens on one side and another color on the other. They don't have to be matching, although that's gonna look weird when everyone looks at you. But again, when you look out, you're just gonna see these colors, which is the G15, which is inside of this one. So Ray-Ban has the G15. Should be the same color to you as I'm moving back and forth over the fluorescent light. But when people look at them, they will see the blue. So, let me fold this back up. Put it back inside this cute little case and if only they put a belt loop on here where it'd be like a cell phone that would be so nice and of course you have your ray-ban cleaning cloth on the inside which is folded up there it does say ray-ban on that lens and the rb on this one these are genuine authentic folding wayfarers of course i'd like to see anyone other than ray-ban try and make these the counterfeiters aren't good enough to make the quality stuff so yeah, this is why I work 15 hours a day. This is a kid's frame I gotta do. Lenses only for someone else. Another frame. More lenses for someone who's mailing me their Tory Burch frame. It just never ends, man. He never ends. Put that back down there under the counter. Your brother's 5154 Club Masters. Let me put these back down here. And let me go ahead and take this block off the right lens while this is if you notice, your lens is completely flat all the way around, just like a nickel. It can stand up on the counter if I were to take it out. Now it's getting the bevel put on there. And if you notice, there is water running in the background, but polycarb cuts dry. In just a moment, ooh, I love picking this stuff off. I love picking it off. Was I fast enough? There we go, there we go. But some water jets will kick in in a moment just to wash away some of that optical debris. But I'm gonna take your block off now. I'm gonna take this blue sticker off. It is no longer needed. And I'm going to put your lens back in. I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 93. 
put your lens in and I'm reading minus four hopefully you can see that minus four and you have two steps of astigmatism correction which gives me a total power of minus 450 it's exactly halfway between four and five if someone had borrowed four dollars from you and then they borrowed another 50 cents they would owe you 450 and that's what I'm reading so your right eye reads minus four minus 50 at 93 your left eye is minus four and a quarter minus one at 80 so without your glasses on things are actually way too large so you are far-sighted you are my I'm sorry near-sighted you can see up close but you can't see far away so you need 12 steps of correction I'm sorry 16 everything is in quarter increments 0 0.25 0 0.15 0 0.75 1 you need 16 steps of correction to get everything the correct size in your right eye you need two steps of astigmatism correction this first number makes everything the correct size the second number takes away the fuzzy edges that's what astigmatism does it makes sixes and eights look alike the letters p and f look alike so 16 steps to get everything the correct size only two steps to take away the fuzzy edges and your axis is at 93 these first two numbers are real values this is just an arbitrary number from 0 to 180 so that your astigmatism is your fine tune knob if I were to twist a knob to make everything clear starting at 0 and going all the way to 180 I would stop just past 90 at 93 to clear everything up for your right eye now your left eye needs one more step of correction for distance and you need four total steps of correction two more than your right eye so when I read these powers I'm gonna have a total power of five and a quarter because four and a quarter and another one makes five and a quarter and we stop just before the 90 uh, at the 80 meridian to make everything clear for your left eye so I'm gonna take this out we move this back down by the way since you asked for this this thing cost me a hundred bucks I hope you're happy so I'm gonna charge you an extra hundred when I do your mirror lenses I'm just kidding I'm just kidding dude Ooh, what about the purple what about the purple ladies ladies anyone out there want that purple okay close everything back up so back to the handstone real quick smooth out those rough edges back to the thumbnail real fast back to wiping that on the floor dry your lens off real quick let's pop this into your black 